Right, here we are for class 16. I've been a bit late this week, sorry. I've been a bit off this week, so I didn't really want to come and give a class to you when I felt a bit there. So I thought I'd wait till I felt a bit more on it, <laughs> so I can punish you a bit more. So here we are. It's class 16 and it's Friday the 12th. So let's get going. Going to start lying down as always, or as most of the classes anyway. So mat, cushion underneath your head. Um, towel if you want to, water, check your space, get rid of anything that's going to get in your way or any pets that are going to get in your way and we'll start. So lying down, Remember the warm up, you don't have to do lying down warm up if you want, you can, do a, you can do it sitting, you can do a bit of work standing up or kneeling if you find lying down doesn't suit you but I think most people are happy lying down so it's where I start. So relax the shoulders, arms just down by your side. Find your comfortable position to lie. You can have your knees bent or your legs straight. Relax the shoulders and just give yourself a minute just to allow your body to relax and just to notice if you do need a bit more help, you might find your necks a bit tight and you might want to put a cushion or a towel underneath your head. So just give yourself a minute just to check you're feeling all right. And then focus on breathing. Really feel your ribs expand and contract. Check that's not tense in your shoulders. You can close your eyes if you want to. So remember we're breathing from the rib cage section here. So we're really expanding those ribs out to allow the lungs to really inflate. You might need to reset the hips if your back's feeling a little bit uncomfortable. And then we're gonna start moving. So you're gonna start turning your head from side to side. A bit of massage on the back of the head. Hold that stretch. When it feels comfortable for you, just to deepen the work. So sink the opposite shoulder down, a nice stretch down the side of the neck. Use that to practice this time, just to practice that deeper breathing into your rib cage. Okay, one more. Then into the shoulders, so get your neck comfy. Start with whichever arm you fancy. Start with the bent arm and circle it round. Remember, if you want to sit up and do this sitting, you can just exactly the same, but just be sitting up. Circle around, loosen around inside that shoulder. Try and keep the rest of your body nice and still. So you can isolate into the shoulder both directions. And staying on that arm, you can then straighten it and make the circle a little bit bigger if you want to. And for all these moves, I'm going to start easier and build up. So you've got an option to build up or stay with the option that suits you. You never know till you get going really what you fancy doing. Sometimes you surprise yourself. <laughs> Sometimes. Round you get. And then same on the other side. So start with the bent arm. Circle it round. Check you're not pushing down on your head because you just give yourself a headache in both directions again. And then into your arm, straight arm if you want. Round you go. Try and keep the rib cage down. If you want to, you can just rest your hand just on your rib cage, not to press it down, just to notice what's going on underneath your hands. You want to keep those rib cage down towards the hips as much as you can. So you are isolating into the shoulder. And then you can do both arms together if you want to. So squeeze the ribs down towards the pelvis as your arms circle back. So we're just starting to get into that upper spine a little bit, as well as the shoulder. Just deep breathing into the rib cage.
and then we'll go across the chest, so hands underneath the head. Remember your option, if this doesn't suit you, your option is to take your arms out to the side and just lie with your arms out to the side instead. But otherwise, hands underneath the head, reset the shoulders and the hips, get comfortable, and then bring the elbows in and out. And all I want you to feel is across your back, your shoulder blades moving away from your spine and towards your spine, so you're getting that bit of retraction. We're going to do more work lying on the front in a bit for those shoulders, so just starting to warm up. Don't worry if they don't touch the floor, and you might notice you've got one side better than the other. My right side is better than my left side. It's old injuries that come back to haunt you, <laughs> unfortunately, because the scar tissue is always a little bit slower to mobilise, takes longer, so you're going to get differences anyway. But squeeze back, and then what you can do again is take the arms out, reset the shoulders, and leave the, shoulder, leave the elbows out for a breath or two. Mind you're not pressing your head up, really filling the lungs up. Cushion underneath your head if you want to. You can even put towels or cushions under your elbows if they're a long way from the floor, just to give them some support. It's surprising the difference that makes. If you find these move quite difficult, just supporting those elbows and just gives you time, a little bit more time to relax. Okay, then we go into our twist. So those of you who are a bit more bendy, if you want to keep your hands underneath your head for this one, you can. Or I prefer arms out to the side. Knees and feet together. You can put cushion between your knees if you want just to support the hips. And then you twist. So we've moved down sort of to the middle section of the body. Turn your head if you want to. And remember on this one, the aim is to twist the centre, so you want to keep your shoulders down. There's no point taking the knees all the way over if the shoulder comes with it, because there's no twist. So keeping the shoulder down. Any discomfort in the inside of that hip there, cushion between the knees, or just let the top leg lift slightly. And again, you can stay over in that twist for a little bit longer. Breathe nice and deep, and imagine trying to send the knees away to the side of the room. Again, you're going to find it easier one side than the other. We're not symmetrical. It'd look a bit odd if we were exactly the same both sides. If you've ever done that, you see pictures where they've took the mirror image and just flipped it. It looks very weird. I thought I'd put yellow on today, just to try and remind the sun that it's supposed to be out. It is June, <laughs> since we've gone away. And we can develop this one again if you want to, loads of ways. Well, some. You can go over and straighten that top leg, depends how much room you've got to work with. Just about got enough from our little leg there. Or you can cross one leg over, hip replacement, you can't do this option but otherwise you can cross the leg. Advantage is you don't take up much space with this way. Whichever one suits you. Check the ankle though. When you take your legs over, you want to let your foot roll as well, otherwise you're going to twist your ankle. So if you've got the one leg crossed over, just change every now and then. If you've got keeping the leg straight, you just push out and you can stay there for a second or two, sinking the opposite shoulder into the floor, pushing out through your foot. I find that way quite, works quite well for me, it gives me a bit more weight for the twist. Good. And then a bit more for the inside of the hips. So hip replacements, you're going to just carry on with the legs together or a cushion between the knees just to support that joint. The rest of you, feet wide. And you're going to do a windscreen wiper move, just letting the leg rock inward, so you're getting that internal rotation as well. I always feel like roadkill when I do this one, I know I said that before, haven't I? We do kind of feel it, like just going in roadkill position. It's good I don't get to name exercises, isn't it? And we'll just do our roadkill. <laughs> Don't 
force that knee down, just let the leg go quite heavy. It's quite nice for stretching all around that hip. It's a bit tight if we've been doing gardening and walking. It might be a bit tight around that hip. One more each side. Then into the lower back. So starting with the feet on the floor just supports the weight a little bit more. You should let the pelvis tip backwards and forwards. Not forcing it, just letting your weight move up and down the lower spine. And we're just getting that arch in the back to stretch out and then arch. Just working it a little bit. But stay with this if it suits you. And if you don't like the weight of the, of the legs into that lower back, if it doesn't suit your back, stay with this option. Otherwise, bring your feet off the floor. Just grab onto the back of the legs to support them and let them rock in and out. And doing the same thing, you're just rocking up and down the spine. And hold the front of the legs if you find that easier. Whatever suits you, you can just hold onto the trousers if they're tight enough. You can. If you stay holding the legs, then you're supporting the weight of the legs and it stays a nice flexible move. If you want to, remember these are all options, but if you want to, you can let go of the legs. Still exactly the same move, you're not letting the legs go any further away from you, but by not holding them, the abdominals have to contract more when you come to knee fold. So you're getting that feeling that you're going to have later on when we're up in knee fold position that your abdominals are tightening and holding the legs so you're holding that neutral tilting in and coming to neutral so it just takes it from being flexibility into a little bit of work for the abdominals if you feel like it and then we'll go around in a circle so again you can do it with your feet on the floor and circle the pelvis round so that you're trying to draw a circle on the floor not too much movement from the knees, it's not waggling the knees around too much, we're moving the hips like a hula hoop move, so you can stay with that both directions, or you can do it again with the feet off the floor, circling round. Holding the legs and using your arms just to assist the legs, don't force a stretch, so your arms shouldn't be pulling hard on those legs, they should just be supporting them both directions. And again, when your back feels a little bit looser, if you want to, just take your arms out of the move. Just take them out to the side for balance. And then, it, again, it becomes more of, a, more of a strength move. Not too much, because we're only in the start of the class, but just starting to get those abdominals switching on. So, up to you. Stay holding them. If you're just very glad it's Friday, <laughs> or you've decided to do this on a Sunday, and Sunday is not a work day, so keep holding on or you can let go if you want to. Just mind your neck, your neck's a good indicator remember, that if you're working too hard, because it's the last bit of stability. So if your neck starts to tense, that's your body saying, I've got nothing else, I'm gonna hurt you, you're gonna hurt yourself if you keep doing this. And then hug the knees in if it's comfortable for your back. Nice stretch through the back. You can do a little bit of upper, upper back work now if you want to. So we're going to do some just very gentle curls up. Osteoporosis, sit disc, not for you. Any issues with the neck, it might just be a bit too much. So just stay hugged in here. Otherwise, hands just at the back of the legs and you're going to squeeze ribs down to hips and curl up. And roll back down now. If your neck immediately tenses, you can put one hand underneath your head. And all you're trying to do is support the weight of your head. You're not pulling up through your neck. So the gap underneath your chin is the same. And the work is coming from this midsection here. If you squeeze your ribs towards your hips, squeeze down, that's going to lift you up. It's not from the neck at all. So if your neck won't switch off, then just keep your head on the floor and stay with this curling. So I'm just giving you different options depending on how you feel today. But if you are curling up, enjoy the stretch back out again. Curl up so your spine flexes and then straighten it back out. Reset it. Hand underneath the head or both hands underneath the head if you want to.
como feet down good old stretch so get your legs straight take your arms back if it suits you and lengthen the spine we're trying to get a little bit of space between each vertebrae gravity compacts us down presses down so all our weight kind of sits down into the hips that's why we've got bigger bones around there to support the weight but every now and then you want to stretch it out so you've got this option or you can always hang off the wardrobe if you want to no judgment okay i'm going to do some line on the front work so if you want to sit up and then curl over or you can just turn yourself around if you want to onto your foot i'm going to sit up and turn over i'm going to grab a drink on the way so we're going to do some work lying on the front i know it doesn't suit everybody to lie on the front so your alternative really is just to be on your knees or sit on the chair and you do all the work that we're going to do lying on the front from there if you want to but otherwise down you come you can put a cushion underneath your forehead if you want to, just to let the neck muscles have a little bit of support so they're not doing too much work. And you're going to have your arms down by your sides. Now, this lower body is not just relaxed doing nothing, it's going to support us. So you're going to tense your legs a little bit, clench your bum a bit, and squeeze your belly. Or just a little bit, just to support the weight. Because remember, we've got all our big bones and our big muscles here, so they're going to support us while we work the upper back. So all I want you to do first is let your shoulders slump and then squeeze your shoulder blades together. It's not about the arms. People get a bit fixated on lifting their hands up. I want you to pull your shoulders back. I want you to hold it for five, four, three, two, one, and relax. We're going to do that twice more. If you find the hold is too much, just squeeze and release if you prefer. So you're going to pull back, squeeze the shoulder blades together. So you'll feel that retraction. Hold it for five, four, belly tight, three, two, one, and down. Your forehead might be on the floor. I've lifted mine up so you can hear me, but you might have your forehead down on the floor. It depends how big your nose is. So one more, squeeze back. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax, good. Then we're gonna do, so that's worked across the shoulders there a little bit. Now we're gonna work our swan dive, we're gonna work these erector muscles. So squeeze back a little bit like you just did, just a smidge, squeeze your belly and your bum, lengthen the spine, make yourself tall, and then lift yourself away from the floor. And back down, you're not gonna come a long way because I don't want you to push so you squeeze shoulders back, belly tight, bum tight, straighten your body, and then peel up. Just like your mat's got a bit of a bad smell and you want to move away from it. And back down. We're going to do two more of these. Stretch, squeeze the butt, suck the belly in, and lift. Tense the leg muscles. And down. Last one, stretch, squeeze that butt, pull the shoulders back and lift. Really good for your posture, this. You can tell it is because it's horrible, isn't it? <laughs> and relax, good. Then we're going to work into the shoulders. Now, if anybody's got any shoulder issues, it can be a bit demanding, this lifting your arms, surprisingly, although it looks quite easy. So we're going to lift and pull back. If you know that's not going to suit you, then up onto your knees, you can lift your arm from here. Or you can stay with just the retractions if you want to. Otherwise, down you come on your front. Arms out in front. They haven't got to be dead straight, but you want some weight in them. So they're just a little bend. Again, tense the leg muscles, squeeze the bum, suck the belly in. So keep that, up, that lower body strong. And then raise your right arm just off the floor. And lower it. Same on your left arm. So what we're doing here is working into the back of the shoulder there. Again, it's all for that upper body posture. So keep the lower body strong. It's not just lying on the floor doing nothing. Squeeze the butt, suck the belly in. Little bit of tension in these leg muscles. 
then lift your arm. So if you can hold it for your five seconds, three, two, one, and down. Same on the other one, lift it. Five, four, three, two, one, and down. One more. Check the shoulders. I know smile more around the ears then. Eh? Get your shoulders down. Have another go. Lift. Three, two, one. And the other one. Again, cushion underneath your head if you want to. Then we're going to pull the arm back. It's kind of my like, I always apologise to swimmers this. It's kind of like breaststroke, but bear in mind I don't do breaststrokes. But it's that action of pulling back I want. So you're going to lift the arm and you're going to pull the elbow into the waist. And back down. So it's kind of like a half a circle. So lift the arm. Bend in the elbow, pull it into the waist. And back out again. So what we're trying to do here is get under the shoulder blade. Squeeze, keep that lower body strong. Lift and go from side to side. Lift and pull back. One more. Then we're going to have a go both together. You ready? So lift both arms. Now you're going to need tension in these legs. So lift both arms, squeeze your butt and pull the elbows in. You're going to feel yourself lift almost into your swan dive. And back down again. Lift the arms just slightly off the floor. Do that circle, pull back, pull your shoulders down your back. Squeeze those abs tight. Back down. Two more. Lift. Round, back and down. One more, lift, round and back. Good. Have a quick drink. Then we're going to get into the abdominals because no point having good strong shoulders if your abdominals are weak because you're going to a sort of a sway back position. So we're going to start just working the abdominals. So fold your arms, put your head on your arms. Tense the leg muscles again. It's almost like you're trying to pull your knees away from the floor. And all I want you to do is suck your belly in tight. And hold it in for five seconds. And let it relax. There's nothing to see. <laughs> it's a really difficult one to watch this one because it's all internal. But it's like somebody's trying to slide something under your belly. And you're trying to pull in to accommodate it. There's no gap really. Unless you're really, really skinny. Suck in. Hold it for five and relax it, but I want you to feel, you're going to do another couple, and I want you to feel here, squeeze in. Not hunching your shoulders, and not lifting your hips, because we're going to build it up, and we want that feeling of coming from here. So I'm going to assume you've done another two, and then we're going to move up onto the forearms. And it becomes a bit more obvious what you're doing there, so relax the shoulders. Tense the legs again, pull the belly button in, and see if you can pull your belly up off the floor and as your belly starts to come up off the floor your tailbone tucks down hold it for a few seconds count to five and then back down now i'll show you the cheat when i come around the class and people and i adjust people the reason i do it is i get that and all that happens is they've just lifted the backside up in the air there's no abdominal engagement going on there so all i need to do is imagine that your belly is stuck to the floor so you're sucking in and trying to pull up and your back will straighten out and then back down. Very good this one for people who get a lot of discomfort in the lower back because when the fronts are strong the back doesn't do so much work. So again shoulders down, pull your belly button to spine, tense your legs and suck your belly up. Hold it up and you might find that you can come up to three quarter plank, you might not but you might be able to. Back down. Suck in. Suck the belly off the floor, keeping the shoulders down, lifting the hips. Back down. Don't forget that breathing, don't hold your breath. Pull in, pull up. Really forcing those hips up. One more. Coming to plank the hard way. Pull in, pull up.
on the back down. Good. And a nice stretch for those abdominal muscles is your high swan or cobra, whatever you want to call it. So start with your hands quite a way forward and lift yourself up. Now, the further your hands are away from your body, the smaller the lift. So if you've got a very tight lower back, you don't want to force yourself off the floor and you want to be able to keep your hips down. So the further your hands are away, the easier it is. If you know you're a little bit more flexible, or as you get more flexible, hands can come in a little bit closer. And you're just getting that nice stretch through your front. Good one this if you do a lot of cycling, because you're rounded when you cycle, you're forward. Especially if you're a bit of a racer. And this is just a nice stretch. Or if you get sciatica, or if you've had any slip disc problems, as long as it's all healed, this is a good one. It just keeps everything sort of locked in, rather than flexing and pushing discs out, but curling up. Sink your hips down. You can tense the legs a little bit again if you want to, that gives you a little bit more lift. One more. And you can always do more of these. You can always press the stop button and do a few more. You cannot fast forward me there. <laughs> right. Then we're going to come up onto the hands and knees. So push yourself up onto your hands and knees. If anybody doesn't want to be on the knees, remember you can do this sitting. We're going to do cat and cow. So you can do beetle and angel instead if you prefer. Just to get the back flexing and stretching but otherwise hands and knees hands underneath hands underneath the shoulders knees underneath the hips and you said it the wrong way around there you end up in a &E. so curl up tuck the tailbone under and curl into a ball press down to the heels of your hands tuck your chin in straighten out let your belly go heavy send your tailbone up Pull the shoulders back and down, and you're trying to push your chest forward. And level up again. Curl up. Push down into the heels of your hands. Suck your belly button in. Relax out. Let your belly go heavy. Tilt your pelvis so your bum goes up. Shoulders back and pushing the chest through. Pull, pull down and back with your hands, so you're trying, as if you're trying to slide your hands towards your knees. It helps with that. Some of you will now find that extension quite hard, so your alternative is to do a few rounds down there, which are a bit easier, and then come up onto your knees, just to get that back stretching a little bit more, if you find that an easier way of doing it. The thing with bodies is we haven't all got the same. <laughs> It'd be really boring, wouldn't it? And that's really, really what I like about Pilates is we can, it can accommodate everybody. So you haven't got to think, oh, I've got to just keep practicing. I'll get it eventually. Why? Find a way of doing it that suits you. You always drop me a text and say, I can't do that move. What else is there? You know, I like a challenge. <laughs> right, enough of this. Let's put some knee hovers in. So cat, cow. Come back to neutral, tuck the toes, push down into those hands and lift the knees about an inch. Hold it for your five seconds. Really push the floor away with your arms. Get these shoulders working. Back down. Cat and cow again, so curl in. Straighten. Stretch your back. Back to neutral, push down into the hands, tuck the toes and lift the knees. I want you to push the floor away with your arms. Activate the arms. Five, four, three, two, one, and down. Again, if you can, curl in. Neutral. Arch your back. Push your chest forward. Pull your hands towards your knees. Straighten out. Tuck your toes. Push the floor away with your hands and hover those knees. Really use your upper body. Five, four, Three, two, one, and well done. Right, what's next? Bit of swimming. Have a quick, I oh know, we'll have some circles first. So hands underneath the shoulders, knees underneath the hips, and circle around. Just release after that one. Circling it around. You might want to just go forward and back if that suits you better. Just releasing the hips. Both directions. 
Releasing the shoulders. Good. If your wrists are feeling a bit painful, you can come off them and just circle them a few times. Put your hands together and press your hands together if you want to. Turn your hands the other way and press the other way just to release the wrists. Good. Then we've got a bit of swimming. So swimming, we're going to end up in this shape. So I'll just quickly show you. So if you know this doesn't suit you, down on your front is the other option. So arms out like we did before, belly's tight, and then you lift opposite arm and leg. Not too high, I don't want you to break in that middle, I want you to keep it tight. So you're lying on the top of the water, just kicking your arms and legs. So that's your option if you don't want to be on your knees. And the reason we do this on the knees, if you can, is there's more control needed. So hands, shoulder distance, knees about hip distance. Press down into the hands. Press down a little bit more into your right hand and slide your right leg back. Now, before you move your left arm, check. Are your shoulders and your hips still square? If you've tipped over to the left, it's not going to work. So you've got to square up. When you're happy that you've got your balance, push down a little bit more into your right hand. Slide your left hand forward. Check your shoulders. Pull that left shoulder back. Line it up with the right. Squeeze your belly. Squeeze your right bum cheek and lift your right foot off the floor. Lift your left hand to match. Stretch through your spine, push away with that right arm. Hold it for three, two, one, down, with the hand and foot, back in. Reset your table, let's do it again on the left. Press down through your left hand, slide your left leg back. Check your alignment, bring it back to the center if, it tipped, if it's tipped to the right. Right hand out in front, shoulder squared. So pull that sh right shoulder back, line it up with the left. Clench your left buttock, lift your left leg, lift your right arm. Push down through this left arm, hold it for five, four, three, two, one, down, back in. We're going to do one more off each side. You can do more if you want to, but that's what I'm going to do. So press down with the right hand, slide the right foot back. Press down a little bit harder on the right hand, bring the left arm forward. Square the shoulders, square the hips. Suck the belly, squeeze the right buttock and lift the right foot. Lift the left arm, line them up as best you can. Push the floor away with your arm. Nice and wide across those shoulders. For five, four, three, two, one, down, back in, check your position, last time, press down through your left hand, left leg back, press down a little bit heavier through the left hand, right arm forward, square the shoulders, clench that left buttock and lift the leg and lift the right arm, square up, push the floor over this left arm for five, four, three, two, one, and down. Good work. Good. Sit into your child's pose for a second and your child's pose is as high as you want to be. So knees apart, big toes together. You can stay all the way up here, pushing underneath your bum if you want to. Or you come as low as suits you. Let the weight sink into your hips. Being up here is quite good if you've got very tight leg muscles. I'm still doing my cycling. Yes, I did my uh, 50k, so 30, or oh, whatever that is in new money. Fifth, uh, old money, I mean, I did my 50k all in one go yesterday. One and three quarters an hour. One and three quarter hours on the stationary bike. <laughs> right, so we're gonna do three quarter plank into this child's pose now. So from, three, from hands and knees, bring your hands further forward. You're going to come forward and as your weight starts to come forward onto your hands, you push the floor away with your arms and you squeeze your butt. I do not want you hanging. This is not cobra. Push the floor away. Back up onto your knees and sit your hips back. You can bring your hands towards you a bit if you want to. Stretch. 
So again, you're going to stay in these positions for a little bit. So as you start to come forward, push the floor away, squeeze your butt. Use these leg muscles to hold you up. Five, four, three, two, one. Up onto your knees and sit your hips back. Sink a little bit into those shoulders, but always control it. And again, come forward, push the floor away, squeeze the butt, no hanging. Control it, hold yourself there. Push up and back. I'm going to add a little press up in if you want to. Hands are about shoulder distance apart. You come forward into that three quarter plank. You bend your elbows and you squeeze them against your ribs. You push back up and you sit back. So you come forward, push the floor away as you come into your three-quarter plank, keep your bum muscles tight, bend the elbows, squeeze them against your ribs, push up and back. Couple more. If you're confident in your, in your press-ups, if you want to, rather than staying in this three-quarter plank, you can come to full plank if you want to and do a full close arm press-up if it suits you. Then back to your knees and sit back. But you've got to make sure you keep your back straight. If you're coming to full plank, you've got no support for those hips other than internal. So you've got to keep them up. Don't drop. So do one more. So stay on your knees if it suits you. I went quiet there, it's very difficult to talk when you do those. All right, have a quick rest, quick drink, and then we're going to go into chest opener. Yay! So, onto your side, block, cushion, towel, whatever you want to, underneath your head. Have your knees bent. Now, this rib cage needs to be lifted slightly. You can always put a rolled up towel underneath there if you want, just to give you a bit of support. Knees bent, one in front of the other if you prefer. Arm out in front. When you're ready, you lift this arm up and you twist a little bit of pressure in the legs to keep them down, reaching out with your hand. Back to the ceiling and down. So this is that rotation again. So we want to keep the legs nice and heavy, like we did in supine twist. Doesn't matter how far that arm goes, doesn't need to touch the floor, it's a rotation. So you're opening your chest up to the ceiling. Hand supports your head, you can turn your head or keep looking forward. Keep lifting this rib cage, because if your rib cage drops down, then your spine goes into a sort of a C shape. And it's very difficult to twist it then, you put pressure in it. So lift and twist. One more. You can always do more if you want. Yeah. All right. Then we're going to do our abductor work. So you're going to bring your legs to sort of about ninety degrees. So your feet, your toes just ping past your knees. Rib cage lifted. Just rest your top hand lightly on your leg. You're not going to push down, but you want something there just to give you something to push against. So you're going to lift your top leg to about hip height, keeping your hips square and you're just pushing your thigh up against your hand to feel your bum muscles working. Again, five, four, three, two, one and down. And do it again and I'll give you the things to look for while you do it again. So squeeze and lift. What you'll check in is that you don't lift your foot further than you lift your knee and you end up in that shape because all the work's coming from there. So when you lift, ankle and knee lined up. Another thing that people tend to do, do another one, is they drop back. And the angle's wrong then of the thigh. So your thigh is parallel to the floor. So that hand against the leg just makes you work that little bit harder. You'll be conscious of the bottom leg working as well. So five, four, three, two, one, and down. One more. Just push your, your leg against your hand as you lift. 
just that bit of resistance makes the muscles work harder. Three, two, one, and down. Give it a rub. Then we'll do our arm circling to give that a rest. So you can keep your legs as they are. Reset the shoulder if need be. And circle your arm round. Any injuries to the shoulder, you might want to do this either with your hand on your shoulder or your arm down by your side. Otherwise, you can let the arm circle. It's another rotation, but as that arm travels, you're working underneath the shoulder blade as well, down into those laps, lats around you. Then we'll do, I'm just looking at the time, a little bit of scissoring. So if you're very bendy, try and avoid with this one over, over stretching to find a straight line. You want your heels level with your tailbone, and level with the back of your head. And if you are, if you do find it difficult to lock out, bend your bottom leg. I don't want you to end up in an exaggerated shape where your feet have disappeared back. So find your neutral line. Bend the bottom leg if need to be. Square your hips up, pull your rib cage up away from the floor. Use these outer leg muscles to lift the top leg so your hips are still square. Use the inner thigh muscles to lift the bottom leg. So you've got your feet just off the floor and then you're going to scissor. Now, if you find the bottom hip doesn't suit this, doesn't like it, keep that bottom leg bent down on the floor. Imagine your feet sliding along a wall. The reason I'm saying that is sometimes we drop in at the hip, so we end up with the top leg shorter than the bottom leg. If you keep imagining that you're sliding your feet along the wall, it's going to help you keep your hips square. And try and use your leg muscles to pull and push these legs. Stretch out through the spine. Pull the waist muscles in. Lengthen this body. and do the splits. One more. And the rest. Good work. Right, a little bit of side plank and then we'll do the other side. Side plank, because you're putting your weight all on one side, this shoulder takes a lot of work. So as always, start low and stay low if it suits you. You can be on your elbow or your hand, doesn't matter, but the support must be underneath the shoulder, not out here because there's no support for the shoulder then. All right underneath it, cover your armpit up. Top leg straight, bottom leg bent into a V-shape, arm lifted. And any injury to the shoulder, stay here because you're building up strength around the shoulder without putting too much weight into it. Lift the rib cage, stay here for a few seconds and rest and that will start to build this shoulder strength up. Next stage, elbow or hand, press down through your top foot, pull your waist in and lift yourself off the floor and back down. So you can use this top arm as a good image. Imagine somebody lifting you by your arm, lift up, press down through your legs, press down through your arm, ground yourself and lift. If your bottom leg is cramping, it's trying to do too much. Top foot's got to work, arm's going to work. Try coming up onto your hand. You might find that's a little bit easier because you've got a longer lever. Right. So lift, hold for your five seconds, if you can. Pulling up away from this floor. We've got the harder version if it suits you. I'll do it on the elbow and the hand so you can see if you fancy it. So up to your half plank, press down a little bit more through this top foot and this arm and straighten the bottom leg out. Bend the bottom leg again and put your hip down. So you come to your half plank, so you've got your bottom knee down, press through the floor and straighten the bottom leg. And bend again. I'll do it on the, on the hand. 
come a bit higher so you might be able to see better. So you come to your three quarter plank sort of thing, press down through your top foot and your hand straight on the bottom leg out. Bend it, sit down. Have another go. If it's too much, stay still. Just stay here and watch. Up, straighten, bend, and down. One more. Come up, press through your foot and your hand, push the floor away, straighten this top leg, the bottom leg. And bend it. Phew, other side. Turn over. Aren't you glad I waited till I was on it today to do these exercises? You don't want half, you don't want to come in off half cock, do you? So lying on your other side, have your knees bent, arm out in front, relax the shoulders, lift and twist. Press down through the legs, and that will give you that support to allow you to get a nice stretch. Reach. You always want to think about what's stabilising your body because that's going to support you. Turn your head if you want or stay looking forward if you prefer. So lengthen the spine, draw this rib cage up, don't let it sink down because it's going to pull your hips out of position. Lift, twist. Lift, pressing through the legs. You can have one leg in front if you find that more comfortable. One more. Then we've got these legs to do. So you just bring your feet forward a bit. So you just see your toes just peeping out past your knees. Square the hips, lift the rib cage, hand on the leg just to give you some something to feel that you're pushing up. So squeezing your bum on this top leg, you're going to lift it to about hip height, trying to align your ankle and your knee and your hip. Pushing against your hand. Five, four, three, two, one and down. If you're not feeling it, imagine that £10 note between your bum cheeks. So you lift that leg up, you're pushing against your hand and you're squeezing this tenor. Bottom leg's going to get involved as well. If you think about trying to lift this top hand, your bottom leg is going to help as well. So both legs are working. That's fine. We used to, used to say the bottom leg shouldn't work, but legs work together. So it's going to always try and work. You just don't want it doing everything. The top leg's got to be working. So check for your adjustments. Sometimes, remember, we, because the lower leg's lighter, it tends to lift more and we end up more in that shape. Square it up. Or sometimes we drop back. And then you know you have because the angle's wrong. It's got to be parallel to the floor. A couple more. Lift and squeeze. <laughs> Back to the bra effort. Lift and squeeze. And again, lift. Five, four, three, two, one, and down. Good. Into your arm circle. So reset the shoulders. The legs are probably all right as they are though for this one. Any shoulder injury, stay with either your arm down by your side and your suggestive shoulder, or a little bit of a half circle with the elbow. Or go for it with a full circle if your shoulder's all right. Round you go. And yes, you're getting that rotation of the spine, like in chest opener. But a bit extra now is thinking about that arm pulling round and down. So you're pulling your shoulder blade down. Pulling down. If you get any clicks in these shoulders, little tip you can try is to hold some a weight in your hand. It can be anything but a water bottle tin of beans, it just having that weight in your hand might just stabilise the shoulder a little bit and stop it clicking. Probably it's just bouncing around in the joint a little bit. Good, round you go. Once more. 
Lovely. And then we've got our scissors. So get yourself straight. Some people like to have their arms straight in this one, and if that suits you, that's fine. I find it, my, my shoulder and my neck don't like it, so I keep my arm bent. But it, you can try that if you want to, having the arm straight. Just be careful. You might, you might have be all right with your arm straight, but you might need some a, a rolled up towel underneath your head just to line your neck up. So you can try that if you want to. Get yourself straight. Very flexible people, if you find that you've gone into an exaggerated extension to find balance, instead of that, bend the bottom leg. Use that for support rather than extending your spine. Top leg lifts to about hip height, rib cage lifts, bottom leg tenses and lifts if you can. And then you scissor. And you're trying to do the splits. This bottom hip is holding your weight, so again, you might want to cushion that. Or you might want to just keep the bottom leg straight, the bottom leg bent and still and just move the top leg. But it's not swinging from the hips. You are moving inside that hip joint. Stretch your feet away, sliding your feet along the wall. Rib cage lifted. Oh, she does nag. Even when she's not here, she nags. Nice big stretch of these legs. Use your hips. Yeah. This one comes back quite a lot down to how much pressure you can cope on that hip. After a bit, it just gets a bit much. So just do one more. And we're going to bend the legs. And then we've got our side plank. So push yourself up onto your elbow or your hand. And you can literally just stay here. That is building up strength down the side of your body. You haven't got to do the lift. If it's not right for your shoulder, or it just doesn't suit you. Check I don't run out of mat. If you are going to do the lift, always support the shoulder, whether it's the elbow or the hand. Bottom leg bent. Top leg straight. Press down through the floor and lift the hip. And down. So you are lifting up. Like somebody's pulling your top hip up towards the ceiling. And you can try it on your hand if you prefer. Horses for courses, really. Some people say, well, one's more difficult than the other. But it, again, it depends on you. So whichever suits you better. But use this top foot as well as the bottom leg. Otherwise, you'll get cramp. Okay. If you want the harder option, come up to that plank. Press down through your top foot, through your bottom arm. Find your balance and straighten the bottom leg. Bend it again and put it down. Lift. Push the floor away, otherwise you won't get the bottom leg straight. Push the floor away, squeeze the waist, straighten the bottom leg. Bend it, put it down. Have another go. Lift. Straighten. Bend down. On your hand if you want to. Probably easy to see from up here. So you lift up, push the floor away, straighten the bottom leg. Bend it, sit down. So the key really to this, if you're struggling with it, is pushing down through the floor. So if you're on a soft surface, you might find it more difficult to do. One more, come up, push the floor away, squeeze those buttocks, don't let that 10 pound note go. And down, well done. Grab a quick drink, we're nearly done. We'll do some nice bit of stretchy type stuff on the back. So, lying down. Again, if you prefer, you can do a bit of sitting work if you don't want to lie on your back. But we'll do a bit of twisting to start with because we've worked those obliques quite hard. So arms out to the side and you're going to twist, a bit of supine twisty, and you might find you've got a lot more movement now. So twisting from side to side. Turning your head. Probably find you can hold that stretch a little bit longer now because your body's nice and warm. Work on that flexibility a little bit more. Good. 
Oh, it's working. Then a bit of hip lifting. There's nothing underneath your head. You can put cushion between your knees if you want to to get your inner thigh muscles working a bit more. Feet not too far away, otherwise you're going to get cramp. So heels just about level with the back of your knees. If you're very bendy, I don't want you sitting on your feet. There's got to be a gap. So lift the hips and put them back down. Try and grind down into your shoulders, not your neck as you come up. So pressing down into your shoulders will stop you sliding along the floor because we want to stretch the front of these hips out. Squeeze your 10 pound note and lift. Reset the shoulder if you need to. If your head does slide along the floor, come back because if you end up with your feet and your, and your bum a long way away, that's where you start to get cramp in the hamstrings. Lift up. Stay here for your five seconds if you can. So lifting the hips, pressing down into the shoulders, a little bit of press into the feet. Not enough to cramp though, just to stabilise. Hold it for your five seconds. And uh, really try and stretch out the front of these hips. Squeeze any bone muscles. If you feel it in your lower back, you might have let your pelvis tilt out of neutral. So go back down, have another go and lift from your butt. Nice stretch, so come up to that bridge. Set your feet so you're supported. Take your hands off the floor, float them up and back. Keep those hips up. Hands back up to the ceiling and float to the floor. Nice one is to stretch out those hips. You might need to reset the feet, so up. Hold your bridge. Check your knees haven't drifted apart. Float the arms up. And back, keep those hips up, back up to the ceiling and down there. Again, in the osteoporosis or slip disc, I was trying to say it all in one go, then stay as you are. Otherwise, up to your bridge, float your arms up and back, bring your hands up to the ceiling and then start to come down one bone at a time. So you're letting your pelvis tilt back. As you roll down and you roll through the waist, back to neutral at the end. So up to your bridge, do your arm floating, bring your hands back up to the ceiling and then it's like you're trying to keep your bum off the floor. So if you come down and you're trying to keep your bum off the floor, so that will stretch out the lower back slowly down. Good stretch for the lower back. The reason you don't do it with slip discs is that encourages a slip disc to slip out. We don't want that. And the reason you don't do it with the osteoporosis is you're putting the pressure through the bones of a spine that might not be able to take that pressure. That's why. Up to your bridge, one more. So if you are doing the pelvic tilt, we're trying to keep your bum off the floor right to the end, slowly down, back to neutral. Yes. Hug the knees in if it's appropriate and suits you. Little bit of happy baby, I think, to finish. So let the knees move around a little bit. If you're not happy with your the weight into that lower back, then keep your, just keep your feet on the floor and let the knees move around a little bit here. But if you're okay, rock around a little bit. Hands just at the back of the knees. Have the knees wide. You can do a little bit of circling or you can lie still. Little stretch for the legs, kick up through the legs. Stretching. And if you're both legs at a time, hold on to a little bit lower on the legs or the feet if you if you can and you want to. through the heels if you want to get a stretch on the back of the legs. Keep breathing. Okay. Bring the knees and feet together, put the feet on the floor, hands underneath you and roll yourself up. 
bit of beetle and angel to finish. I think check your wingspan, you've got enough space. I'm going to knock the ornaments off now. So curl forward, sit up, open out, squeeze the shoulders back. Tip forward, supporting your weight on your legs. Roll open. Yeah. One more, let your weight come forward. Open out. And just resting behind you and lift your chest. Give it a lift, give it a stretch. And you're airing right down into your boots. I want you to breathe right down as deep as you can. One more. Right, my dears, sorry it was a bit late this week. I will book up next week. <laughs> Have a good week, end, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.